Hey folks and welcome back. Now in my previous video, I had shown you how you can connect your LG washer to the Wi-Fi using the ThinQ app. Now today we will look at how you can connect the LG washer to Home Assistant and view it as a dashboard card in Home Assistant. So with this, let's get started. So first thing what we are going to do is we are going to integrate the ThinQ APIs with Home Assistant. Now for this, what you will have to do is you need to have Hacks installed. Now Hacks is Home Assistant Community Store in which community provided integrations are provided using this Hacks mechanism. Now if you have not installed Hacks, there's a link somewhere here as well as into the description below that will show you how you can actually install Hacks in Home Assistant. So make sure you check out that video if you have not installed Hacks. Now I have already installed Hacks so I'm going to go to the Hacks store and here I'm going to go to integrations and here what I'm going to do is under the integration section I'm going to click on explore and download repositories. Now here now I'm going to search for LG and you'll see this smart thin Q LGE sensors. So you're going to select this and you're going to now click on download. So now this will actually download this particular integration for us. So now the download is complete. What we have to do next is we need to go back to our settings and in the settings, go to devices and services. And under that, we are going to click on add integration. And here we are going to now search for LG ThinQ LGE sensors. Now you will get this only once you install that specific integration using hacks. So now I'm going to click on this. And now it's going to ask you for your login credentials that you use for your ThinQ app. So now there are two ways that you can authenticate here. That is either you put in the username and password here itself, specifying the country in which you are in, as well as the language in which you have signed up with. The other mechanism that is there is you can use this URL redirect authentication mechanism. Now I will show you this one because this is pretty simpler one. So I'm going to select this option so that I can show you how this redirect authentication mechanism works. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on submit. Now what it's going to do is it's going to show you this particular URL, right? So copy this URL and paste it in your browser here. Now this will take you to the login site from LG and here you will now have to enter the credentials for your ThinQ app. So I'm going to enter my credentials right now. Now I have entered my credentials. I'm going to click on sign in here. Now once you click on sign in, you will see in this address bar over here, you have this access token part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire URL with the access token and I'm going to now paste it in this. So this is the redirect URL that got generated after you logged in here. So make sure that your credentials are correct and you have this access token equals to with some particular thing. So copy this entire URL and paste it here. So now after clicking on submit, I got this particular front load washer, which is actually connected to my ThinQ app right now. So I'm going to click on finish right now. You can select the area that you want to place it in. If it's in the bedroom, you can place it in the bedroom also, or you can put it in your washroom. So I'm going to click on finish right now. And then let's go and look at our device. So I have this LG front loader washer. It's right now off. That's the reason you can see these states here. But when I turn it on using the app, this will work fine. Now with this, we integrated the ThinQ API such that we can see all the sensors and the states of our washer inside Home Assistant right now. Now comes the most interesting part that is we want to see this washer on our dashboard, right? So let's see how we can have this card being brought in. So for this, you will have to go to this site here. So I'll provide this GitHub link into my article, which will be linked into the description below. So you can refer it from there. So first thing, if you're going to use this integration, please give this person a star over here, like give this repo a star because he has put in a lot of efforts and is maintaining it. So a star is appreciated. Just give it a star. Now let's see how we can use this. So this is how it will look like. And now I'm going to go to Home Assistant. Now, what we will need now is something called as an SSH access. So SSH access is a way to get inside the Home Assistant OS 
such that we can access the internals. Now I've created a separate video for this. So the link is somewhere here as well as into the description below. Make sure you have set up SSH for this. So now what you'll have to do is go to your terminal. Once you set up the SSH access, you will have this terminal option here. So if I expand this, this terminal option is here. And then what you will have to do is you will have to go to your config folder. So type the command CD config. And here you will find a folder called as www. Now, in case you don't have it, like for example, right now there is no www folder. So I'm going to create one using this command called as mkdir www. So I've created this folder. Let me go inside this folder right now. So here I'm going to make sure that I'm going to copy the HTTPS URL. So I'm going to copy this and I'm go back here and I'm going to say git clone and I'm going to paste this URL. Now to paste it, I have used control shift and V that will allow you to actually paste this URL. And now this has actually copied the entire folder structure from here into this location. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, if I do an LS, you will see that folder. Let's go inside this folder. And then we are going to navigate to something called as config. And then there is another www folder inside this. So I have come out of the folder and I'm right now inside this config slash www. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this command cp minus r and I'm going to specify L, the folder name that is this one, this entire thing. So I'm going to type that entire folder name. So lg config and then www and here I'm going to put a star such that it's going to copy everything onto my current directory star and then space and I'm going to put a dot. So this will now copy all the contents inside this www folder inside my current directory. So when I hit enter, if you see now, you have a lot more things here. Don't forget to put this minus R. So it is CP minus R LG washer, this entire thing. And then you will have all of these files here. Now I will put all of these commands. If you follow step by step, then you will know how to actually do this. So now you have all the required files that you need to show the UI. Now let's go ahead and see how we can update the dashboard. So for this, I'm going to go to the overview section. And here what we are going to do is we are going to go to this edit dashboard section. And then what we will need is we are going to click again on these three dots. And then we are going to click on manage resources. Now, in case if you don't see this manage resources option, what you will have to do is go to profiles and enable the advanced mode. So you have to enable this mode here. That is this advanced mode. And then you will get that option. So since mine is already enabled, I'm going to now click on manage resources. Now here I'm going to add this resource here. So according to the documentation, it is specified here that you have to copy this. I will also provide all of this information in my article so you can follow this step by step. And then I'm going to put this here and I'm going to select style sheet. And then finally, I'm going to click on create. Now with this resource already in place, what you will have to do is add some template sensors. So for this, go back to this link here. And here, if you see, you will find this configuration.yaml file. Open this configuration.yaml file. And here you will see some template sensor. So you will have to copy all of this right up till here. And we are going to now go back here, go to our configuration editor. So that's here. And then in our configuration editor, we are going to paste this in our sensor section. So I'm pasting this here right now. If you see, this has a washer timer display as well as a dryer timer display. I don't have a dryer, so I'm going to remove this entire section and I'm just going to keep the washer section as well as you will need this blank sensor here. This is also required. Otherwise, you'll get an exclamation mark in the card. So I'm going to remove all of the ones which are commented. Make sure that you don't delete this script, but only remove the one which is commented. It's just to keep things clean. Everything that has a hash in front is a comment, so you can remove that. So be careful while removing it. 
otherwise you might miss certain scripts that are present here so this is the minimal script that is there right now only for the washer now what we need to do is we need to replace this entity ids of the sensor of our washer itself so for this i'm going to go back to settings and then here in the settings section i have this sensor here for the front loader washer i'm going to go here and i'm going to go to this gear icon and i'm going to copy this sensor id now i'm going to go head back here and i'm going to replace this sensor dot washer with my sensor dot washer similarly there is one here as well as there is one here i'm going to replace this at both places now here you need to replace the washer run state so let me go back here and here i'm going to now select the run state so let me click on this go to the gear icon and i'm going to click on copy now i'm going to come back here and i'm going to replace it in this here. be careful while replacing it any typo or some extra words could then cause this not to work so be very careful while pasting it so right now i have replaced all of these sensor entity ids with the ones that corresponds to my integration so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this and then i am going to now restart my home assistant So home assistant has now restarted. Let's go to our dashboard and in our dashboard right now, what we are going to do is we are going to add the washer card, right? So for this, I'm going to click on add cart here and then I'm going to search for YAML and I'm going to click on this manual option. Now we are going to paste in the YAML code for the card to be displayed. So let me go to this link here and come out of this. And since mine is a washer, I'm going to select this washer card here. So let me open this file and I'm going to copy all of this content. So I'm going to copy right till the end and then go back to home assistant. I'm going to paste it here. So now if you see, we have a first view of this card, but there is some problem here. You see that this entity IDs are kind of not available. Certain entities are not available. This is the same thing that we did in our configuration. We have to update all of these entities here with the one that correspond to our device. So let's start from the top. Here we have the washer run state. Let's go ahead and copy this run state from here. And I'm going to paste this here. So we have quite many of these. So we will have to replace all of the run state with the new run state entity IDs. So let me do that right now. Now the run state entity IDs have been updated. Let's now update the washer entity ID. So let me go back to home assistant here and I'm going to open this front loader washer. Click on the gear icon and I'm going to copy this. And then here I'm going to come here and I'm going to search for the washer entity. Here there is one sensor.washer. I'm going to replace this. If you see now, I have replaced all of the sensors right now. And if you see right now, it is already showing me these values. Now, why this is showing me these values? Because I have turned on that machine over there and I've enabled remote access. So let me open this in my app right now. So this is the ThinQ app. I'm going to open my front loader washer here. And in the meantime, I'm going to save this card right now. So this card is right now saved here. I'm going to click on done. So I have paused that machine right now. I'm going to turn it off. Let's turn it off right now. So this will take a few seconds to actually update with all this information. So now you see it has reset itself. Now let me actually turn this on. So now let's see if we can turn on this washing cycle. So when I click on start, so the washing cycle has now started and this will take about a second or two to get reflected into the card here. There we go. It took about 10 seconds to actually update. So be a bit patient. So it is right now showing that it is in the sensing mode. And then once it starts, it will actually move to the wash mode. So let's see whether it moves to the wash mode. There we go. So it has now moved to the wash mode and it is showing the current time that is remaining. So it's showing on the app one hour, 17 minutes. And that's what it is also showing over here. 
So this is how you can have this washer being monitored on your home assistant dashboard using this card provided by this person. So this person has put in a lot of effort. So give it a star for his efforts that he has put in here. So we just saw how we can configure the LG washer into home assistant and view it as a home assistant dashboard card. Now I keep on making videos around how to make stuffs smart using home assistant. So make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one. Thank <laughs> you.